<laughs> it shouldn't be. The world is different now, and I think like Me Too has changed um, the industry, and you know it's it's different. It's different now. It's it's better for younger women now coming up. Much better. That's right. Yeah, of course I missed the boat, but. <laughs> Right. Well, you're still shooting. You're doing stuff. I mean, your short films are hilarious. I mean, that, yeah. that uh, what was it? What Martha said? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was one of the funniest. Oh, the new one I have I've is seen. playing in South Orange oh, in a couple it? weeks. Right. Yeah, when is it that's the South Orange Festival. Soma. Which festival is it? Soma. The Soma oh, what the. Yeah, I'll send you a. Yeah, I'll send we'll you. A, I they haven't gotten in touch with me. They just. I mean, I have to figure out when it is. That's in the art center, right? Is that where it is or no? No, it's. I don't know where it. It's a maybe. Yeah, the so much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have to look at. I didn't get the date. So this is the third one in a in a series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you want to tell us about the series? Yeah, this is a series of... Surely the dog is under the table. This is a series of short films that I've been making um, like a, that as kind of as an anthology series about um, you know, just women struggling, difficult women, you know, sort of giving voice to the you know problem women, high-maintenance women. Yeah, well, I, said, I don't remember that one being a struggle. She was causing problems. <laughs> well, yeah. Anyway, she's got problems. But anyway, so it's sort of the giving the... So I've been making those for the last couple of years. And um, so then the last one I just finished, I sort of, it's been hard to get it off the ground financially um, as a series. So I, the last one I made, um, I'm developing it into a, a, long, a longer piece, like either a series or a feature film. But, but they weren't, I saw two. I, I, will, I will see the third one, but um, they weren't the same women. They were different women. Yeah, they're different women, but the one, so the the new one, the third one has the one of the actors from, the same character from the bake sale one. So, oh, the one so, that, that spread the rumor? Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, that one, um, yeah, so she, yeah, so it, they're, they're like intermingled, so. But I kind of using it as a proof of concept to try to raise money to. Would you like to make a feature? I yeah, think? I think Is so. That what That's what, yeah, I have, I'm. In developing the script and hopefully I'll have something in a few months um, um, to try to get as a feature. Do you want to tell us what inspired those characters since now you live in suburbia? Yeah, it's just, you know, <laughs> all the moms floating around the burbs causing trouble. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I saw the first one, that's what I loved about it. Because it was like this... Nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like... It's like <laughs> Well, I'm just interested. Everything in, is a yeah. facade that behind yeah. that is chaos. Yeah. No, I'm just interested in, you know, kind of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> and how they behave and, like, why are they being an asshole, you know? Like, there's a lot of bad behavior. <laughs> like, something's causing it, you know, and I'm just interested in... But are you specifically interested in the bad behavior of suburban moms? Just or, women. Or... Just, yeah. Yeah. Just the, again, like, I feel like the... The voices and the, the depictions of women as they are struggling to make their way through the world has not really been on screen in a in a believable but or the, accurate way. They, I don't, would you call them struggling? They're kind of going against each other. Yeah, part. but they're struggling with what they want, so they're acting out, you know. Is that they're, because your impression is that they, it's not what they really want, but they think that's what they want? I think they're misguided and I think they're unhappy and I think they're acting out and they think they want something and then it's really something else that they want. And this is mostly upper upper middle class. Um women. yeah, no, the well, the third one's not. No. No. But I haven't seen that one. Yeah, so. yeah well. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same character from No, it's different. There's the same actor? No, no, no. The one the one that's in this one is um her name is Emily Burgle and she's been on um She's on Broadway for years and years, and then but she was on Shameless and Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And okay, I've seen a few of those. See, I did see some TV. I did see that on a plane. Oh, okay. <laughs> a few Mrs. episodes. Maisel's, of that. Yeah, and that was uh, it was pretty good. That was, yeah, uh, yeah, it's good. That at least that's what I heard. That based on loosely on Joan Rivers and her stand. -up. Kind of, I think a little bit. That's yeah. what I read because I, I saw it. Yeah, I'm stuck on a plane, and I read for a while. Then sometimes it's turbulence. I can't read them <laughs> so I started watching that I was like it's pretty good 
Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. The woman from, and then this last season of Mrs. Maisel, the woman who played the lead in whatever has a part in this season where she plays Carol Kay, which was this famous bass player from the 50s and 60s. So Liza Weil is the actress. So she plays, wow. yeah, so she plays Carol, which is kind of funny. So Yeah, I think it's so just whatever it was, it was I think the early stuff. Like first season, so. mm. it's good. It's good. It's good. So, do you write feature scripts as well? Um, I have. Yes, I think right now I'm. I just took a new job at a new university, so I've been serious, like very overwhelmed. Um, so I haven't written in about nine months, which feels very un, you know weird. But so I'm just kind of getting my bearings with this new job so um, but I plan on like I said the third short film is kind of I'm with that character I'm developing that into a feature that I'm going to write no since you you also taught screenwriting mm -hmm. that's what I teach now pretty much so yeah. and usually when I have your former students they praise your critiques and comments oh. and, and <laughs> notes and everything else um, what do you think is the biggest weakness of student short stories or stories shorts um i don't know um i feel like i think um i think students i think they i think that um character development and illustrating character is the most important thing and finding interesting characters that jump off the page and therefore off the screen that are compelling. And I think students have a, they rely too much on dialogue. And this is something, you know, that they think screenwriting is just writing all the dialogue and it's not, it's like writing the behavior and writing the, finding the behavior that illustrates who this person is and what do they care about and making them, you know, like the, make bringing life to who they are is what people, you know, audiences will, and readers will respond to. And I think that that's something students just, they don't, there's a lot of, um, let me just write it all in dialogue. And I'm like, no, so they're, they're you don't need to show the, it. <laughs> show it, don't tell me. <laughs> no. We're in the radio play. Yeah, but then it's not, yeah. So I feel like that's, um, that's I think, a big, you know, you know, I think, but part of it, I think, too, is just, you know, young, like, college students are just new at it you know screenwriting is not something that people like learn in high school you know it's not like something it's a very um usually people come to it later you know like i said before it's like a lot of times if you're interested in drama and plays it's like your gateway drug is acting and theater you know and that's where the entree is you know and then as you you know are in that world you start going oh wait i like this story or wait i'm going to write my own thing or i want to make this character i made up an improv class i'm going to make it into a skit you know like that's the pr process a lot of times and so i think students find screenwriting later in the development and the process like i'm taking a group of students to la next a couple weeks and um i have three students who are actors who decided they want to write and direct and they've been their acting majors, you know, but they they don't want to do that anymore because they now they know they want to do this. So. Well, it's part of being in school is figuring stuff out. Right. How yeah, would you yeah. know unless you try it? Exactly. Exactly. So I think but I think it's great. Like actors who come to screenwriting are great. You know, like it's the best, you know, because they understand performance. They understand dramatic beats. They understand they have a whole different scope of um, and the awareness of screenwriting that I think like than other students to have, you know. Do you start them with story structure first? Or you well, it's things? interesting. I right now, so I'm the program director for the screenwriting program at UArts where I teach now. And um and we have it's a, one of the only BFAs in screenwriting on the East Coast, which is really exciting and it's wonderful. And we just rewrote and redid the curriculum to bring to add more television writing courses and TV story analysis and adding production classes in because we want students to, writing students to 
produce and direct and learn to act and learn about editing and because you can't write film or tv or anything you know scripted entertainment you know drama narrative <laughs> without having to having done at those all those other pieces you know because it all that's how it comes together so you have to understand that and have a sense of it as for your to enhance your your writing so um so yeah, I think that. So what was your question? <laughs> was asking about that. I think I said your first assignment. Do you get them to understand the story structure? Oh, story you... structure. Yeah. So we we have so we have this school. Um, we have a um, a character class. That's the first the first year foundation course they take is a character class, and then the second class is a, a, a screenwriting class where there's some structure so i you know i teach the character class and i introduce some structure just enough so that you know there's a framework here do you know and more specifically to illustrate how the arc works you know the character arc because that's key for content you know being connected to a character is experiencing their growth and following that and and rooting for them to change and grow and realize things and so so you in order to really understand that you have to have, you have to understand some kind of structure so i do a little bit of that to help them understand it, and then they get more of it in the second the second class where but i also feel like as much as like i'm a super structure geek like i study structure i read everything i can like i'm really into it i'm really you know i i'm like I also feel as, as into it as I am, I think a lot of structure is is not that critical to really know if you're a writer. Like you have to have some understanding of it, but like I tell students, like if your characters are alive and interesting and they're doing stuff, like we can help you with the structure. You know, there's a lot of executives and development people and producers who can help you rearrange the structure so that it feels like a movie you know but if you you know but that's not the hard part like the hard the part that makes a writer special or a filmmaker special is you know what is the story they're telling and how are they telling it you know so you people coming up with a character first yeah. I work that way, but a lot of people work the other way too. A lot of yeah, people I mean, work. I mean, it's different people. Some people come at it from concept. Some people come at it from character. You know, it's whatever. You know, and if you're a writer in a writer's room on a TV show, you know, you might be a character first person, but you're writing for somebody else's show. You're going to be writing from the outside in because it's not you. It's not yours. You're you know, writing another person's vision. Right. So well, that's, yeah, you have that's to, a, you have to develop, right. So you have to develop both as a, you know, screenwriter to be in the world. You have to develop both. Well, both I'm just curious how you get them started because. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's important both, but I think that to get even to, to get work out there that gets noticed, it has to have life and it has to have vibrancy and it, and that's like character, you know, and again, like structure, that's easy to fix. I can't make your character come alive, <laughs> but I can move your events around to make sure it makes sense in the but story. Like I can help you with that. Is that coming because of you're working as a writer, you're probably doing that for so long. Now you realize what is mostly missing in the work that was. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like, past. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, Shirley. <laughs> no one can see you, Shirley. You have to I jump know, on you're the under table. the table. You're Shirley. under the table. It's okay. Um, so I'm surely distracted. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to say, Shirley? Besides nothing. <laughs> um, so I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. yeah so structure. Yeah, yeah the structure. And yeah, structure, it's important, but that's not the most i don't think that's the most important were thing. you working as a script doctor Is that, yeah okay. yeah I used so to do that's probably, and i would go in that's see, and, yeah to fix. well so, yeah, yeah so i could go i would get many like hollywood when my hollywood days like i would get jobs because i would go in and say okay here's the struck you know i'd be like this needs to be here and this has to go over here and this is why this is happening and this has to be you know and i can i have a kind of a geometric mind where i can like no now your answer makes a lot of sense yeah so i can like to me <laughs> that stuff's easy like i right. can see all that and i don't so I, that doesn't i don't struggle with that so i'm always like you know um but yeah and then people are like that's it she's gonna figure let's hire her I'm like okay and then you know no it is shirley hello shirley <laughs> now you're on camera 
All right, Shirley, get down. Come she, on, honey. That's fine. She no, you're okay. Right. We have cats. We have, <laughs> yeah, I think almost almost every podcast. A cat or a dog or guinea pigs. <laughs> Hamsters. Like guinea pigs. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you find, this may be just me, in my experiences with, with students, but I found the visuals lacking or the understanding of how to create an interesting image. And I don't know if it's just that they come without any or very little art and they come to college and they struggle with making interesting images. I think the, the reason why, and I see that too a little bit, and I think that the reason why the images are not interesting because they're not, they aren't in touch with what they're trying to say. You know, and I think that the image should be evoke what the themes what you're looking to communicate you know and that how you frame a shot or what you choose to show you know is should have meaning and um sorry i gotta it's a fly <laughs> <laughs> sorry um that there should be meaning behind the shots and so if the and the visuals and what you choose like what a character is watching and how the angle and how you're watching it you know what's the point of view of the camera like what what are you trying to say it's not just empty pretty shots or cool shots it's like what is what is this shot communicating how is it trying what are you trying to make the audience feel you know we're watching my husband and i are watching this show on and it's so scary and every sunday night we're just like i'm just terrified like i can't <laughs> handle it this is called the outsider it's so scary, but it's so incredibly well shot. And every every frame is like freaks me out because the way the, the way they frame every even if it's just a dialogue, just two characters in a car talking, the angles make you feel like there's a monster watching them and they're gonna get the monster's gonna get them and I'm terrified because it's just and there's the way they play with rack focus a lot, you know, so you're it's just it's very but it's all deliberate and controlled and they're doing it on purpose to make you feel something. And I'm feeling something when I'm watching it, which is terror because I'm worried about these characters are going to get eaten by this awful monster, <laughs> but I never see the monster. It's just always these, these, these weird angles that make me feel like he's watching them all the time. And it's really tense and it's beautifully done. And it's really, so it's like, find figure out what you're trying to say before you try and, you know, frame your shot what are you trying to communicate with this well, and i think people are missing that beat i think young people they're using it miss... as a recording device and it was a exactly. tool exactly they have to use the visual is there to enhance and uplift and illustrate and what you're trying to say not the other way around i think and i think that's the mistake and that's why students should go to college and go to film school <laughs> well, i don't know if they need to go to college but it's learned somewhere somehow how to do or at least have a point of view because yeah. i don't think like, four years is most of those classes are. i mean i, I shouldn't say that because that's what i'm doing <laughs> but, no, but I think honestly it's, yeah four years you don't need four years to learn how to make a film oh, listen i didn't go to film school yeah i didn't i never but Orson i Wells didn't go to college <laughs> no i mean i don't think it's necessary but i do think that that's what we need you know that's what i instill and talk about with my students at my school and that you know you have to have something to say we need to learn it way you learn it is irrelevant yeah and so if you learn it on your own or you have something to say on your own but i just think a lot of young people don't come with that they they come with a it's gonna look cool <laughs> Whatever that means. I'm like what does that mean like that's not gonna if, if i'm not connected to that character's experience it's not going to look, it may look cool, but I'm not, I don't care, you know, and, you know, and there's something for everybody, but anyway. Now, another thing that's interesting, at least for me, is like that, and I don't know if you share the same experience or just me. It's very, not that it's easy, it's, it's hard for them to make a short. But they also come to classes never usually have seen short films. A lot of them. Yeah, you have and to they show look them. at two hour or whatever they usually see and they try to squeeze those ideas in the five minute film. I know, I know. That's why I have a whole <laughs> process for teaching how to write short films that I've been honing for years <laughs> because it is really hard. And it's not like, 
And I always tell students, don't have your short film end like everything's okay now. Like it should be a down ending. Like make us feel like, oh, I want more. What was that? Oh, I feel shitty. You know, like that's that's where you make a short film resonate is finding a down ending, showing a character realizing something, you know, like showing part of who they are as a character in their world, how they interact and what's a complication that makes whatever they're trying to do more difficult. And if they, you can show that and then they realize, Oh wait, I wasn't doing this right. Or wait, that guy hates me or wait, I, I don't want to live here anymore. You know, like whatever the realization is like that can be profound and that's, and you need for short films, you have to focus on smaller realizations as opposed to like, you know, killing the shark or, you know, <laughs> raiders raiding the finding the ark. You know, it's like you can't do that in 10 minutes, you know, but you can do. Oh, wait, do I love that girl? You know, kind of realizations. I think that's what so what, what would be a couple about. of tips you can or advice find a small can... story like, you know, here's my advice. Like, you know, characters are complicated. Stories are simple, you know identify an external goal for your character like this is another thing find an interesting character who's like vivid who has something like clear like problem early on like they're too shy or they're arrogant or they're you know getting bullied or you know something a character with a problem and then have something small that they have to like pursue like a goal that makes sense for their lives like i have to go get you know my mother's sugar at the store but i <laughs> fell off my bike and i had to go ask the name you know like just like smaller not like you know there's always like the space journey you know and like you're in college you can't shoot that <laughs> you know, it's our right? budget does not allow for a spaceship <laughs> yeah we can't have any spaceships and then there's a like and then there's the hitman like, like <laughs> you're not a hitman you don't know what a hitman is, you know, like don't write something. I mean, yes, we, we, that whole, you know, write what you know, is true, but you have to write what you know, but you also have to learn stuff and you have to like develop, you know, an understanding of, you know, educate yourself and learn how to, you know, learn how to learn things so that you can write beyond your own perspective, but don't, you know, but a lot of students don't do the research. So they're like writing, like, medical dramas and like they have no or police the hitman and the police you know and they have no they don't even know the jargon like i can watch law and order and know you know like just watch law and order you don't even have to like yeah. do that much research but like they just don't do that kind of basic research and like to make their work authentic to the world that they're trying to create it's all kind of made up and they're copying what they've seen and i feel like that's like a big problem like students need to do that if you really want to show a hitman like you know really like explore that you know? go kill a couple of people on a weekend no you don't have to kill. that's no, what i mean kidding. you don't have, but you have to do that research <laughs> you know <laughs> like for yourself like nobody's yeah obviously you can't always write what you know but that's the point you know? or the cast like uh, themselves as grandparents yeah i hate that too but there's so many older actors that would love to be in your movie and just put an ad in backstage or anywhere, go to the local theaters. There's tons of people around, especially older actors who love to be in student films. So don't, don't cast your, you know, your roommate as the grandpa and put like <laughs> shitty yeah. makeup Fake. on. Fake. Yeah, don't Fake do weird. that. Because film it doesn't lie. <laughs> no, it's film just, doesn't it's lie. You can see right through it and it just looks cheesy and you're not going to get anywhere. So yeah, use, and use the resources that you have you, that you have exactly. like what? write about yeah. what you can like write about you know a world that you have access to you know like if you i had a student once who was like you know he's like i'm writing a western and i'm like okay, you can't write a western where are you going to shoot and he's like well my uncle has a ranch out in western jersey i'm like okay go for it and he did and he had horses and they had people riding horses like he did it and i was like Okay, you did it. But unless you have that uncle's yeah. ranch, like you can't, you have to write and think about what film that you can make about a world that you have access to. Yeah, quite often they ignore what they have. And I'm like, well, you have young people, you're on college campus. I mean, I know. But if I see one of, more film with a dorm room, well, you don't have to use a dorm room. I know they but, all do that but, too. Yeah, they all like, like, shoot dorm. in their dorm. <laughs> like, don't shoot in your dorm. <laughs> Just go outside. <laughs> yeah, those generic locks with a spike. <laughs> 
I know. It's like the world is so interesting. Get out of your dorm room. <laughs> you know, just go in a, go to a bus station or, you know, you can write a whole, shoot a whole film and just, you know, bus station. People waiting for a bus, you know. We can go home. Parents have us. Yeah, parents have houses. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So what other advice do you have for anyone trying to make a film let's say not student but just anyone trying to make a film is there something that you've done that you would do differently or um i think it's just a journey of always learning so i think um you know if you're just starting out i would um just really make sure your script like have a lot of people read it listen to the notes try to make it more you know make it work um have actors read it um if if you know just really get your script to a place where it's it's really strong and you know you can always and when you're shooting um always shoot enough coverage so that you can edit your script in the edit room because that's something that i was like a profound when I was making my film, it was like, oh my God, like, I don't need half this scene because the actor's eyes said everything I did and all the stupid dialogue I wrote. So you have to, and sometimes you, and you don't know that until you're in the edit room. So you have to have options. So it's important when you're shooting to get enough visual options to rewrite your story in the you know in the in the edit room which i think a lot of people don't realize they met you know like i'm doing this in a two shot which or i'm gonna track out you know and, and they have like and then you're stuck with that like even though the second half of the scene is really long and boring you know you're <laughs> stuck with that shot and you don't know and you know even you know i, I when i was editing one of my films a couple years ago the one thing my editor was a, edits a lot of tv shows And um, she was like, oh, my God, like, you know, I was like, we were rethinking the story in the edit room. And I was like, oh, my God, I screwed up. I should have written. And she's like, oh, my God, this happens all the time. They're always rewriting. You know, she would and they order up, rewrite and they reshoot, you know, TV shows. They do this all the time. They rewrite everything mm -hmm. all the time. And they mm -hmm. just they have the op. They're like, oh, we need that shot. You know, we need her saying this. And they just go get it, you know, and they send it to the edit room, you know, so the, it's like. This is a moving thing. It's a growing, it's an evolving, it's a living thing, a film. It's not like, you know, but you need you need to get the script to the best place you can, have something to say, know what you're talking about with it, like know what it is you're trying to communicate. And when you shoot, get enough coverage so that you can rewrite it because you will and you will not use everything that you think you need and you will need stuff that you didn't get. You have to and shoot for the edit. Well, you have to shoot for the edit, but shoot other stuff too, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know. Quite you... often point of view shots that forget, cutaways that forget. Right, right. And also, yeah. And and also, you know, cut around performances, especially if you're starting out and you're using, you know, actors who are not professional, you know, or semi-professional or whatever, you know, even good actors sometimes give bad performances. But, you know, you have to learn, you have to have options to cut around a performance that might not be what you need it to be. You have any questions? <laughs> I've been monopolizing this conversation. Yeah, no. Put Alex <clears throat> Fine. <laughs> Things keep going on, but yeah, a lot of the questions I was going to ask, you just jump right on it. <laughs> <laughs> I also did, I didn't know as much of your background still. So. Um, no. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right. I stole all your questions. No, you, you. Yeah, you were covering so much, and my mind was. Yeah, going Apologize. back to film school. And, Did you go to film <clears throat> school? Well, I went. He was actually the uh, TA when I was at Montclair. Oh, uh, you were classes. at Montclair. Yeah, That's a long time ago. <laughs> oh my god! Before the they reorganized yeah. the whole thing. Oh, before Tony, so he must yeah. know all those. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so all the mistakes that you mentioned were, uh, yeah, very clear in my head. <clears throat> Either process. I made them or. Everybody, somebody in my class made them. Yeah. The Hitman. Yeah. Uh, Skateboard yeah. Hitman. That's the, <laughs> the classic. The, the classic. Skateboard Hitman. Cadence. What was, like, without naming any And names. zombies. The the zombie. Zombie. Oh, zombies. Everyone wants zombies. Zombies, I think, are new, though. We have zombies. Oh, dude. Yeah. We had a lot of zombies. Vampires. Last few years. Vampires, zombies. In ours, it was vampires. What was the worst character 
the, uh, of any in the past student project yet. What was the the worst character? I don't know. I don't want to say. I just I feel like I'm not naming but, names. But they, okay. but they. I don't know. I feel like they're imitating what they see and what they like, and I and I appreciate that because yeah. they love what they love and they want to make that and they're passionate and they're excited about it. And I think the challenge is to push them to find their own voice of what they feel like is important. And I think that's what, as an educator, like my job is to push you to, you know, push you out of this zone that you think you want to be in because there's more out there and there's more in you and more in your, you know, psyche that brought you to love that Goodfellas. You know, they all want to imitate Goodfellas. That was always... I find a lot of my students have never heard of Goodfellas. Really? Oh, my God. Yeah. That's the one. Is students still doing Goodfellas? Not mm-hmm. lately. Now they're so well. Yeah, another teacher and I were laughing. Like, well, when is it going to come to the time where we have to? They haven't seen Breaking Bad. Like that's mm-hmm. you know because that's the one thing well, everyone's seen. And and yeah. they still are watching Breaking Bad. Like they all have. And I use it. I mean, I use it. Yeah, I found a lot of them have no idea about The Godfather, The Graduate, like any of that stuff. They've n- yeah. never heard. They're of very it. film illiterate. Yeah, and like, they all what they all. And then I know because my school, it's a lot of. I have a lot of animation students, and I'm always like, what are you, and they're all, it's like anime. That's a big, a lot of anime, and I'm like, I I don't watch that, I don't know, I know, like, Mizaki, like, that's about it, you know, like, Howl's Moving Castle, I'm all on that, but that's about it. Bugs Bunny. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. No one's watching that. Yeah. yeah, that's what makes me feel like I'm too old to be doing it at this point because my reference points, reference points, and just I, no you have idea. to show them. That's the thing that I realize. Like I have to show them everything. Like I can't rely. Or and like at, like at this new school too. It's interesting because they they're not they don't have a reference even for a lot of uh, commercial material. Do you know? Like they don't watch. Some do. Some watch like the you know, the Star Wars and, you know, you could always go to like Star Wars, yeah. you know, and I, you know, those kind of big cultural, you know, touch points. But, um, but even at the school, they don't always, they haven't. Seen, so it's like, I have this mixture, so I have to bring everything into the room or assign it. Like you have to go watch this, yeah. you know, and then we'll talk about it, you know? So yeah, the, well, because there's so much, it's so fragmented now, you know, people can really find their little niche, um, you know, content filmmaking yeah. or shows that they're responding to and they don't have to look at, you know, yeah, they've all seen like back, okay, Black Panther, <laughs> they've all <laughs> seen that, um, you know, but like, yeah, none of them have seen, I have like two students have seen Parasite. Well, I'm surprised that they don't know the history. Like if you, I don't know, it's, they I don't know history, put myself, yeah. but if I was interested in whatever, let's say it's automobile making or design. You think it'd be interested in history of that medium and go back and like where it's come from, and they only know the last five six years, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, but that's what school gives you is this yeah, idea. Yeah, but that wasn't like that when I was growing. No, up. I, I didn't even go to film. And I studied film like I. But you knew it, like it, well, you, I studied it. I would rented mo- like when I came, was coming of age. Like I discovered film and as a medium of what I loved, and I just watched everything and ate it up. And then I had this like I told you I had this great job at Turner where I was like doing all these and they would send me the best part was that they would dub and they would send me like boxes of like you know like the movies that I had for the research so I would have like all of these classic films on videotape at the time but it was great I think there's maybe it's so easy to make films and there's so many on demand Mm -hmm. that it's easy to get into a niche that you like you know, if you like rom coms, you're gonna watch rom. You know, so many rom coms, zombie movies. There's so many. Yeah. Um, horror movies, and you can just fall right into that and never come out of it. Yeah, I think that's true. I think people can just do what they st- stay in their little lane. You know. And, yeah. And that you know you need to exposure to alternate styles and genres, and you know it's important. That's why I saw. That's why I thought Pride and Prejudice and Jump and Zombies was all boring. <laughs> yeah, I'm get, sure that was. You <laughs> get that, the, the classic literature gets some zombies, and the zombie fans get some some classic there literature. There you go. Citizen Zombie, <laughs> <laughs> the remake of Citizen Kane. Citizen that's zombie. a zombie movie. There you go. <clears throat> Citizen Zombie. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, what was that? The the Lincoln with the what was that the movie? Abe Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Right, that's oh, right, it. Right, right. Yeah, you're right on that. <laughs> I knew that one. Right. He's big into this. <laughs> yeah. You know, I like history. I like zombies. Yeah, there you it's go. That crossover. Yeah. Yeah. It's a zombie history. Yeah. <laughs> your PhD in zombie history. That would be funny. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a PhD in creative studies. Yeah, we have that in our school. <laughs> Which I'm really interested in, honestly. Like, it's a scholarly, like, to think about what does creativity mean and how does it work? And, you know, um, anyway, I think it's interesting, actually. As, like, I would never get study, it. I don't have time, but, but you know. Maybe as a psychological study, it's not going to make you more creative because you're. you're no, doing. but I think it's interesting, like, how creativity works and what makes people creative in terms of how to teach it, do you know? Because, like, I'm forever teaching people, trying to find ways to teach students to be more creative. And I keep going to the things that I find, you know, like the world I think is really interesting and yeah. people are really interesting and look to them because that's what we're doing. Um, but anyway, I'm just interested in it. I think a lot of them just don't get out enough. Yeah, that's true. They so don't the get out. They're on their very, screens watching yeah, their anime. Yeah, there's a lot of experience. So. Yeah, it's funny because I also see like a lot of students like during break, they um, they're all on their phone, and nobody's talking, and I'm like so like last semester I came in you know I go you know during class break and it's like I'm like everybody put down your phone and like talk to the person next to you you know, and they're like oh okay <laughs> like you know their knee jerk go to default is the phone. Somebody did an experiment and. and Maybe it's Jonathan Haidt, but, but maybe maybe somebody else. I don't know, I forget where I read it. But they, they took two students Thursday of class and put them like this and said, have a conversation in front of the whole class. I couldn't do it. Oh, yeah. And then he asked them to get you know back to back and exchange phone numbers and text each other. They were doing it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> waiting for a, yeah, it was just fine. a yeah. film that's all vertical text. format. Oh, that's fine. Emojis, you know, texting. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. That's a new thing that vertical format, like this. Have, oh, yeah, everybody it's a hates it. But, idea. well, you know, this Quibi. Have you heard of Quibi? No. Quibi is a new venture. Um, it's a platform for short form video. And a lot of the content, because it's meant, it's short form meant to be on your phone, right? A lot of it is being shot vertical, which is, and it's being, and it's run by like Jeffrey Katzenberg. <laughs> I know, but. Anyway, but that's anyway. No, don't I don't know that for sure. Yeah, no, I mean I just think it's a bad idea. I know people are doing it yeah. and have seen it, and it just looks awful to me because you don't look at stuff that way. I don't know. It just seems your eyes are horizontal for maybe maybe the next generation their eyes will be <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eyes will slowly cool. migrate. It's going to be yeah. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> yeah. A couple of generations later, the eyes <laughs> turn. Oh my god. <laughs> you have two disposable thumbs. <laughs> now. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. The, the evolutionary tree is going to branch off to like. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. That would, yeah. that would be scary. So, do we miss anything? Is there something that you want to bring up that we didn't talk about? Either, uh, well, what do you look for in in, uh, in a performance, an actor? Um, that something that they're alive, that they're thinking. You know, I always, I tell like a good performance, you know what that character is thinking at any moment, you know, even if they're not, you know, you know what they're thinking, you're reading their expression and you know what's going through their head. And I think that's the key is like knowing what they're thinking. Oh, I know what I was going to ask you before that we veered off. But since you write your own stuff, are you stickler for dialogue to be exactly the way you wrote it not at all okay. no, I'm always like who wrote this shit it's like my line on the set I'm always like who wrote this shit change it no. that's always uh, no, I I always feel... no because that's what I mean I find like when you're writing and you're not hearing it you're hearing it in your head and your head and your head and then suddenly the actors are doing it and you're like oh wait I don't need that line this is a better you know like you it's a, a it's a living thing so you have to move and shift and shape and sometimes actors have a better and then the actors take over the roles and then they you know add to like 
wardrobe and costume and jewelry, like what are the and props and things that are theirs and their home, you know, and they build their characters in a way. So they want a different kind of glass because my character wouldn't have that. And so then we change, you know, so then things shift and change because people are adding to it, you know, so it changes the script. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I think the idea is that if thematically, if like, it's there on the page and we know what we want and then how we get there is like, you know, shifting. Yeah, change, how is yeah. that as important as what? Yeah, yeah. So if things, yeah, no, I'm, I mean, sometimes I'm like, there, sometimes if there's a, um, a specific line that has to come out, like a piece of exposition, because that's another, that's something well, right. like, there's yeah, there's like an, exp like I remember the editor, I was cutting and the editor like cut out like we were editing this scene and he was like, oh, I figured out how to get around this like shot problem. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, oh, that's great. You know, that's awesome. That scene works perfect now. Great. So then we're watching it down like weeks later and I realized he cut out a line of dialogue that's that's exposition that's setting up and I was like oh my god I completely forgot about that back again oh my god this is not gonna make sense you know like so you're like oh shit it's going too far you know so you have to you can always cut more well you can just put the line back in but anyway so sometimes in that process of like rethinking it you forget that you you lose anyway so yeah. Do you do a table read or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. I try to, yeah, as far time. as a, for a, a rehearsal, yeah, because like you, like I said, you can't usually afford more than a half day rehearsal with the actor, so you just do a table read and talk for a few hours, and then um, and then you read like you'll do a read through on set and block it and stuff, so that's a little bit you know, but you know, there's and then you can do reading. A lot of people do readings um, with writers groups or things like that. I don't do a lot of that. Yeah, right. So, did we cover everything? I think we did. <laughs> I think you covered you my think? whole life. Well, when were you born? No. <laughs> As a baby. Classified. As a baby. That's classified information. Well, thank you very much for oh, yeah, uh, no, sharing this with us. Oh, yeah. It was fun. It was fun to talk. Uh, Thanks for we'll having me. we'll do it again at some future sure. time. Yeah. Well, maybe next time you have a phone call. Well, yeah, in a couple of weeks. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Come see it. I so. will. Absolutely. <laughs> okay.